Hi y'all, so today I'm going to give you an introduction about how we're going to make apps using App Inventor. So using our book, The Three Coding for Kids, create your own app with App Inventor. And using these apps, we could play them on our phones. So that would be really fun, right? So I'm on page six on the bottom. So what does coding mean? Coding means giving orders to a computer in a language it can understand. So how we like people talk to each other, right? Well, people can also talk to computers through typing in code that computers understand. So we're going to learn how to code, and then the computers will understand what we're trying to tell them, and then we can make our own apps. That would be really cool, right? So on the next page. So we're going to be using the MIT App Inventor. That's This is a website that the college MIT made, and it's really good. Okay, I'm on page nine. So this is like the basic layout about how anybody invents apps. Let's read about it. So creating an app. Phase zero, the idea. Everything starts with the idea. Knowing what you want to do is very important. Not everything has to be sorted out in detail, but it is important the final objective is very clear. A clear objective lets us define the steps to reach it. So we want to think of a goal that we want to achieve in the end. Like, do you want an app that tells you about the weather, an app where you could play a game on it? So you got to think of what type of game or like what the buttons will like do, what you want the buttons to do for you. Okay, phase one, design. When you create an app for a smartphone, you have to create an interface that allows you to use it. So you need buttons, images, text fields, and these things, it's called components. Components are the objects that are visible on your smartphone display. So when you have like apps on your cell phone, the things you see, those are called components. So we can, the components allow you to better organize what is visible on the screen, aligning each element horizontally or vertically. So like vertically, like on like apps where you have to scroll down, that's vertically organized, right? And then horizontally, I guess you scroll side to side. Okay. Phase two, coding. When you're done preparing the interface, you're done preparing the buttons, you need to program the behavior of your components. So what the buttons do, what the images do. When you press the button, what does it do? You have to code for it because code is telling the computer what the button is supposed to do. So let's read them out. The component won't function in, until you assign them with programming blocks. For example, you have put a block with a start label on your interface. You'll have to assign a programming block that will make something happen when it's pressed. Programming is event-based because everything is triggered by an event, like clicking on a button, dragging the finger on the screen, or time passing. Okay, phase three, test. So connect your cell phone, smartphone to the App Inventor using the app MIT AI2 Companion. Okay, we're going to do that later when after we design the app. And then phase four, download. You could download the app on your cell phone and share it with friends. Sounds really fun, right? So let's go to App Inventor. Yeah, I'm small. <laughs> okay, so I just searched up on Google MIT App Inventor. And then this is the first thing that comes up. So let's press it. Okay. And then we want to press this orange button, create apps. And now we need to sign in using our Google account. So either use your account or ask your parents. So my account's here. And then it logs in for you so your work will be safe. So welcome to the MIT App Inventor. And this are some tutorials if you want to check out later. So let's start a blank project. And let's call it test. Because we will, let's today we're going to explore what's inside of App Inventor. So let's give it an OK. Turns out I can't call it test. Let's call it intro. Okay. So, here's things. 
Okay, so let's look at the tools. Projects, here you can manage your projects, create a new one, and import and export projects. Start new projects, you can save projects after you're done with the step you want to save it. Connect, you can manage your connection with your cell phone. Build, you can create an app that you can use on your cell phone. And help, there's tutorials, which we can ex explore later. Okay. And then here is the projects, your trash, guide, report an issue, you can choose languages, and here's my cat. Okay, designer and blocks. There are two workspaces. The first one is called designer. So we're in designer right now. So here's the two workplaces, designer and blocks, designer. Let's you insert components into our, our app. So remember we said about components are the things we can see on our cell phone. See, they literally even put a cell phone here for us. So that's the things we see on the cell phone. So we could look here. There's like buttons, there's images like we talked about before. So you can manage and define the characteristics of the components you use. And then the second one is called blocks. So here's blocks. Here's how you switch between them. And here you find the visual programming blocks to define the behavior of the component. So what does pressing that button on that interface do? Well, you gotta say, you got a code for it. So let's look at the designer interface. So this is a navigation bar. You can add screens, list of available components. This is the design area. This is the list of components you used. Right now we don't have any except a screen. Customization area, so you could probably change your name, colors, sounds cool. And Managing the area for our files. So upload files. If you want to upload a picture of a button, we where you do it. Okay, blocks interface. Here. So this is navigation bar. This is a list of programming blocks. This is the workspace. So this try and white space where you're going to drag the blocks on our workspace. This is where you can upload files if you want you to upload code. The backpack, you could drag some blocks in the backpack and you'll be able to use them in other projects. Navigation keys to make the blocks bigger, smaller, or centering them. You could delete blocks by putting them in the recycling bin. Okay, so let's look at the components. So remember components is in the designer. And here's all of them. So you can even scroll down. So there's user interface. And here's the options in the user interface. So the user interface contains elements that allows you to build the interface with buttons, text fields, images, selectors. So there's buttons, there's images, you can label things, lists. Okay. The layout. Here you can find the components that allow you to organize the interface components horizontally or vertically. So if you want it side to side, horizontal, if you want a vertical up and down. Media. So this contains components that access the multimedia functions of your cell phone, such as cameras and voice recorders. So here's cameras, there's sound, speech recognizers. So it's really cool because you get to use things on your phone and your phone has like a built-in camera and like voice recorders, right? So you can use that for your app. Okay, here's drawing and animation where you could create video games and animations. Maps, you could use this to make apps. Maps, uh, sensors. So here you can find elements to access your cell phone sensors, such as gyroscope, accelerometer, clock. So your 
your phone has a lot of different sensors, right? Like a clock, how you know our phones have clocks on them. It's built in and you can use that in your app. And then there's gyroscopes, which is like if you your phone can sense if you're tilted or not. So that's cool. Light sensors, location sensors, thermometer. Use all use that in your app. Social functions, you can access your contact list. Storage, you can store data files and connectivities for the Bluetooth and the web. It's cool. Okay, blocks. So let's go back to blocks. This is the coding part. So blocks define what the app does. The first selection of the blocks is divided into categories. And in each category is many types. So let's the first one is orange and it's control. So there's these controls, these blocks are very important. They tell your app how and when to do certain things, when to activate something and under which conditions. Like for example, if you look at this first block, it's like if something's happening, like if I am touching the red ball, then I add one point. Sounds like a game, right? So where you want to touch red balls to touch to earn points. So this is like this senses the condition and then it does it. So it even gives you an explanation. If a value is true, then do some statements. It's really nice. If you have like if you want to know what the blocks does, then you could just put your mouse over them and then a little block box shows up and tells you what more about it. Okay. Logic. So this is green. So logic, these logic operations help controlling activation conditions. So if when this is true, when this is false, then something happens, right? So we all use these blocks and we connect them together, kind of like Legos, to make a final big piece of code. I will tell the computers to do things. So math. Math operators and mathematical functions to make your app compute. So how we use, use math, you can also use math and coding. Like there's addition, subtraction. Like for example, if you ever need to like add points in a game, you could use the math, right? Useful. So text. Blocks to operate with every textual element. So here's text. We could put text in here and it'll say it, right? So this is like, this is how you can make things talk. So like, if touching a blue ball, then, and then you say like, say this, then you could do that. Lists, blocks to manage many values at the same time. So you can make a list and you can have many values in it. So, Raise colors. Here you can find blocks to handle colors inside of the app. So if you're like touching the red ball, if you're touching like different colors, then like different things could happen, right? Maybe you're not supposed to like touch the yellow balls, then you have to like avoid them with your mouse. That's cool. Variables, customizable containers for values. So you can make variables. We actually use variables a lot, like for example, scores. In the, the score changes, right, during the game. In the beginning, your score starts at zero, so set the variable score to zero. And then, like this button right here, and then every time, like, and then you can use the control, like if touching the red ball. Then, and then we use math, we like add one point to the variable score. Core. And the procedures. You create sets of instructions of a function in your app that you can repeat on various occasions. So if you always have the same code over and over again, you can copy and paste it or you can like make it a procedure, right? Give it a name and then every time you put that in, you know, do the bunch of steps. Okay. So this is the introduction, so we're done with it. 
the next, my next video is going to be about how we are going to start these projects. So that's pretty cool. So it's important to be very familiar with like what's on the screen and where you can find different things. Because once you have an idea like, ooh, I'm going to make a like a game where if you touch something, you lose a point, then you got to think, then where do I find the place where we make points? Where do I find the place where we make buttons? Then you got to think of, you got to know where to find them. So it's important to be familiar. So we learned a lot about it. So thank you and good luck.